Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna talk about intrinsic value. And I'm not gonna talk about it in the way that you're gonna find online or in textbooks. I'm gonna talk about this from my own personal perspective here, as this is something that I've really wrestled with as I've debated people in the DeFi side, um, as well as economists, so my economic training and background here. Uh, this is just a common topic that continually comes up over and over again. It's kind of a core piece of contention between the different school of economics. So today we're gonna to talk about what is intrinsic value. So to start off with here, the definition of intrinsic is going to be belonging naturally. So when we start to think about things that have intrinsic value, they have a natural value here. It's not going to be added or perceived. It's going to be actual value here. And I've come up with what I call the bird test. So yes, this is called the bird test. And the way the bird test works is you ask yourself, would this be valuable to a bird or other type of animal here? And if the answer is yes, it most likely has intrinsic value. If the answer is no, it most likely does not have intrinsic value. Now, of course, there are going to be some gray areas in the middle here, but let's go through a few examples of things that do have intrinsic value and things that do not have intrinsic value. And some of these are going to be quite argumentative on the forms here and on the finance and economic communities, but bear with me while we go through these examples. So examples of things that have intrinsic value would be commodities. So another way to look at this is looking at goods that have value that are not processed. So it's kind of a core basic material here. Uh, we can think of like commodities, almost all commodities, I would say probably every commodity except for maybe oil and gas uh, are gonna have intrinsic value. So you think about wood, right? Think about a bird, does a bird need wood? Yes, it makes a nest out of little sticks and twigs. So yes, it can use wood. You can also look at other animals too, they use wood. Uh, you can ask about things even like gold. So people like to argue for currencies that intrinsic value is one of those key pieces here that currency needs. And of course, gold is always argued as the gold standard here as we call it, because gold has been used for so long. And I would argue, yes, gold, silver, and other metals have intrinsic value in the sense that even birds, for example, get really excited and put you know, little iridescent or shiny pieces of metal and they weave them into their nests. Now I know metal scares birds sometimes too when you hang them up and the little thing spins around and it shines, but they also find pieces of metal and tin and they use those to actually weave into their nests. They think it's a pretty interesting feature. And so yes, gold, silver, and other metals have intrinsic value. Now other things such as mud or dirt has intrinsic value, which seems kind of odd, right? Who wants a big pile of dirt? Um, but even if you do the bird test here, do birds need dirt? Yes, they do. Uh, birds actually eat little pebbles and rocks, helps grind stuff up in their stomach. Uh, birds also use mud, so they mix the dirt with water. So water also has intrinsic value here because you need it to survive. Uh, they mix mud and water together and they can actually build nests out of this. At least some birds do here. Um, and then finally, another example, this is going to be labor. So this isn't an actual physical thing, but labor in itself has intrinsic value, right? Labor applied to a variety of different arrays is going to be one of those things that has intrinsic value. And in economics, this is one of the largest sources of value that we currently have. Um, I'll talk about that maybe in another video on economic growth within countries, uh, personal growth as well, and trying to leverage basically your labor um, as something that has value and how you get ahead basically as a country or as an individual. Now, things that do not have intrinsic value so let's start off with some easy ones. For example, cars, phones, um, other appliances, things like that, right? A bird would never use those. So you do the bird test, right? Would a bird need a car? No, it, it doesn't need a car. Um, would a bird need a phone? No, it wouldn't need a phone. If you look at a lot of these different items here, or objects, uh, they're typically comprised of other things that have intrinsic value. So you think about a cell phone. Uh, it uses silica, which is sand, which is, you know, has intrinsic value. Uh, it uses silver for a lot of the conductors inside the phone. It uses glass, for example, which you could argue maybe does or does not have intrinsic value. Um, but when you put all these things together and you make some sort of phone, so let's give an example here, right? My Samsung Galaxy, uh, it has value to me, but it is not intrinsic value. It doesn't by nature have value. And a good example of this with the phone is, you know, let's say in five, 10 years, or even two years, for example, uh, my phone will no longer be desirable. So this is, I think, like an S21. Most people do not want this phone. So, right, as I flash it around and show you, it's all exciting, like, oh, maybe it's a new, whatever the newest model of the phone is. 
and you want that phone, but as soon as this phone becomes two, three, four, five years old, now its value essentially goes down. So it doesn't naturally have a value, right? That value is decaying and it disappears because all of a sudden there's no longer use for that. Uh, other products and services as well, things to really think about here. Uh, I collected Beanie Babies and Beanie Buddies when I was a kid. So same phases like Pokemon cards. And these things were the hottest, you know, most exciting collectible on the market. And for $7, you could have a Beanie Baby. And I think it was like $20 or 1950 or something. You could have a Beanie Buddy. And they were super collectible. They were worth a ton of money in Beanie Babies that you could buy. They were in limited runs that were only made in specific countries or something like that. Or those that have little typos on the Beanie Babies uh, name tag card here. Uh, these sorts of things had extreme value and you could buy one for $7. If you got the right one and you held on to it long enough, it might be worth ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars here. So, right, these are examples of things that do not have intrinsic value. It's really value that's attributed to humans. And I think that's one of the defining characteristics that kind of separates a lot of these things when you look at intrinsic value versus other types of value here. So now to get into some of the controversial examples of intrinsic value here, I would argue almost every sort of financial product does not have intrinsic value besides commodities, of course, as we talked about earlier, um, but things like bonds, stocks, derivatives, they all have more or less like a financial value, a cash flow value, right? So I make you a loan, I expect to get cash flows back. There is a risk with that and you're actually paying for that risk. That's what that, that's what's compensating you, right? Is the risk piece of it. Uh, if it was guaranteed and I gave you $10 and you gave me $10 back, um, you'd either have no interest or your interest would be really, really small because you just have the bare minimum time value of money baked into that. Um, but there's always a probability that you will not pay that loan back. So that's why you get paid different you know, interest rates on bonds here or loans or things like that. Um, I'd argue the same thing for stocks because again, you're going to have cash flows coming in that are based on a corporation, which is not really a real thing besides the labor piece of it. And it's basically a corporation as a whole is all the labor and the people and the management and the products and the demand and the supply of these sorts of products, but more importantly, the demand for these products, which could dry up overnight and you could be the next Beanie Baby manufacturer that's hotter than hot and everyone's buying your stock. And then all of a sudden, poof, the whole thing pops and it becomes worth nothing. I would also lump into this houses also do not have intrinsic value. Now the wood in a house has intrinsic value, the concrete in a house or the more specifically the water, the cement powder, um, the sand and the aggregate do. But again, the house as a whole does not have intrinsic value. It doesn't have any value to a bird, right? Does a house specifically have value to a bird? I mean, you could look at this on the, the middle kind of gray area and say, well, maybe they could live inside and it would provide shelter and it would provide other things. Uh, but at a fundamental level, can you boil that down into smaller and smaller parts of things that actually have intrinsic value that a bird could actually use, like build its own house? Yes. So I would argue things like houses, for example, are financial assets that do not have intrinsic value. And that finally leads me into types of currencies. So fiat currencies, for example, I would argue have no intrinsic value. It's just a piece of paper. So I have a piece of paper here. That's uh, actually an envelope. Uh, I write on this piece of paper, uh, Dimitri, AKA Fancy Quant, owes you, um, I don't know, two hours of labor. That's gonna be it. And we're gonna say these units are Dimitri bucks. And here you go, here's a piece of paper. I guarantee you with my name on this sheet of paper, I'll give you two hours worth of Dimitri bucks. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a piece of paper. Um, US dollars though, for example, so a little bit of discussion on fiat currencies is backed by nothing. It is literally a piece of paper and you betting on the promise of the United States government. Now the valuation that backs the dollar and why it's so important are kind of two pieces here. One, it's going to be the government itself. So the government can make rules and laws and it can issue tariffs on people and taxes, which again, raise value and pull value in from other people. It can essentially force its citizens to give it money or value. Um, so government piece here. And the second piece is going to be the US military. So you think about this from a country perspective, uh, no little tiny rinky dink third world country can go out there and say, um, you know, I'm going to basically get a bunch of dollars or something and I'm going to fraud them and make all these fraudulent dollars and think nothing's going to happen. Or politically, they can't go do things and then think that somehow, you know, they're screwing over the United States and nothing's going to happen, right? There's always a risk of war or penalties or fines because 
the U.S. government and its military specifically uh, provide a threat. And that's essentially what backs the value of the dollar. Now, the dollar used to be backed by gold, which again had intrinsic value. And since basically if I wrote you a piece of paper here and said, you know, I owe you uh, one ounce of gold, for example, and I sign my name. Now, you still have to have a legal system that you could hopefully sue me with. But again, the gold itself has intrinsic value. Now it's halfway backing this piece of paper. It's not 100% just fiat. And so it would have more value because I promised to do something for you, but the paper itself has no value. It's the gold that backs that piece of paper that has value here. Now, going into cryptocurrencies, for example, and why I see a lot of debates on this, uh, if you search online and search something like conditions for money, they vary a lot. There are some commonalities like durability, portability, uh, divisibility, uniformity, limited supply, acceptability, non-counterfeitability, things like these. People start adding in all these crazy things. But intrinsic value, oddly, is not one of these top ones that are listed online, is one of those points that's leveraged against cryptocurrencies and said, hey, there is no intrinsic value in cryptocurrency. It's someone crazy like Dimitri just saying, you know, uh, you have a digital bank account and I put on there, you have so many Dimitri bucks and I write that in your account and I take your other sorts of currencies, whether it be gold or US dollars or something else. And essentially I just promise it has value. Okay, that's all it's done by. Now with cryptocurrencies, this is essentially what's going on. And there's actually people saying, no, 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 but wait, but wait. Um, I purchased this, I gave you US dollars that actually back this. So therefore it has to be worth something. It's like, okay, we can pretend that's how that works. But the issue is, is the valuation of that cryptocurrency is nothing more than the supply and demand of a digital asset that a bunch of people are speculating on. So again, this goes back into the argument of stocks and bonds and houses and things like that, where people say, no, 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 Dimitri, Ethereum, for example, it has value. And the reason it has value is it has a discounted cash flow. So because it's going to produce cash flows, therefore it has value. No, it does not have value. That's just going to be like a corporation here. If there is demand for that currency, if that demand exists, and if cash flows do come in from that, then you will have value in there. It's a financial value here. It's not an intrinsic value. So you think about this from the example of a Beanie Baby, right? So I bought a bunch of Beanie Babies and I'm really excited. I'm going to retire and be a millionaire when I'm old, right? And it has demand and everyone wants these Beanie Babies and it's driving the price of Beanie Babies up and different ones are worth different amounts. So think about like cryptocurrencies, different cryptocurrencies are worth different amounts and they do different things and they have value because they basically have a blockchain, which people argue is a product. Well, if the demand for that product disappears or regulations stomp it out or something else occurs or another one comes along, if you're holding something like, I don't know, the Dimitri crypto world and Dimitri's crypto goes bankrupt and I fraud you and I defund you and I steal all of your money, at the end of the day, you gave me value, whether it be in labor or it be in US dollars or wands or pesos or something else. At the end of the day though, you still have nothing because it doesn't have intrinsic value. It doesn't naturally have value. So please don't confuse cash flows with intrinsic value here. So I think this is one of the key drivers of intrinsic value and what it is and why it's important. This is why I advise people, if you would like to get into the crypto space, um, just realize it's like a gamble or a bet, okay? Uh, even more so than doing things like stocks or bonds or corporations that have true value with true cash flows and assets backing those, um, it's something that's good to get into. So I have a very small portion inside the crypto market. It is purely for speculation. I have a little bit, and of course, just the big names, and that's it here. But this should not be used as something that you view as like a retirement plan. It's, it's a massive gamble. It's a huge risk. It does not have intrinsic value. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think it should be used as a currency at all. Um, there are some really creative, cool uses of it though as well. So I'll put this little caveat on here. Uh, Starbucks, for example, could be viewed as a awesome pioneer of the crypto realm. Because when you pull up your app on your phone, I put US dollars in, you could put something like pesos in, for example, and you can you know, put it on your Starbucks card. As soon as it is on your Starbucks card, uh, I can't take those back out into dollars. Um, but again, it, it gets me a good. I can go and buy coffee 
in a cup. Uh, I can buy, you know, coffee beans. I can buy cups and mugs and other things that they have at Starbucks. But essentially, uh, cryptocurrency could be used as kind of a tokenized way uh, for companies to do this a little more digital, a little easier. Um, I would argue Starbucks basically has a cryptocurrency. It, it's just the Starbucks uh, bucks or whatever they call them, the stars and everything that you get here. So anyways, there are some interesting use cases for it. But as a store of value, as a asset in itself, as an actual currency that's going to be used to exchange value, no, I just don't see it being there. It does not meet the requirements of uh, intrinsic value in itself. And there are other conditions as well that just aren't met with it. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.